is noisy because I have every machine running in the world. But I, one of the things I wanted to do in 2021 was do reading blogs because I love watching reading blogs, spoiler free ones. I love when people do like big book, book blogs. I literally could watch people reading all day long. So every month I wanted to read a big book and I did that successfully in 2020, but I didn't really document it because I didn't document anything because 2020 was 2020, you know? So this year I wanted to do it and I knew that the first one I wanted to do was Crescent City. And I feel like Sarah J Mass is fantasy, you know what I mean? A few years ago it was Cassandra Clare. When you thought of fantasy, especially on YouTube, you thought of Cassandra Clare. Now it's Sarah J Mass. I've read the Glass, Throne of Glass series. I'm on book six, I think. I'll actually probably do a reading blog about that next month. But when I saw that she was coming out with a new series that was like urban fantasy, I was really excited. So this one is the House of Earth and Blood, actually. It's not Crescent City. Crescent City is, Crescent City is the series, and House of Earth and Blood is the name of the book. So I've not documented reading at all. I'm on page 136. So I wanted to just kind of talk about how I'm feeling about it as of right now. Um, I don't have any reading footage, so I'm literally jumping right into like what I think. Um, if you've read Thorn of, so I haven't read Court of Thorn and Roses, that's on my list, probably will do a big book vlog about that at some point, but I've read, like I said, up to number six of Throne of Glass, and I really like them, but there's things that I don't like about them, and I think one of Sarah J Mass's strong suits is not character building, but like relationship building and I don't necessarily want to say like magic systems because I don't think I think her magic systems leave a little bit to be desired um, she could explain that a little bit better at least in Throne of Glass I don't feel that way in Crescent City as much uh, but she does a really good job of like building these like really cool worlds that you'd want to like see and you she she's really good with like imagery and letting you use her imagination and stuff like that and I found that Crescent City was like the same way. And I I swear I thought that this was set in New Orleans, but I guess Crescent City is kind of like a stand-in for New Orleans. And I wouldn't call it post-apocalyptic because it's not, it's just a different world. And it's like a world where humans are slaves basically. And so it's fae and werewolves and things like that that are taking over the world. Uh, so yeah, I'm not very far into it, but I like it, but there's something about it that just like isn't drawing me. And I was super pumped that it was an urban fantasy because Cassandra Clare does urban fantasy. And while Cassandra Clare is problematic in a number of ways, I loved the Mortal Instruments series because of its vivid imagery of New York. And and of um I cannot remember the name of the world that the Shadow Hunters go to. And then I'm reading The Infernal Devices currently well not like right now but I'm in the process of it and the imagery in that is more London and it's the Victorian era and it's so good I don't think Sarah J Mass is as good as that she also I've learned and maybe I'm wrong I don't know if she's ever said this I think she purposely makes her main female characters unlikable because in Throne of Glass I can't remember her name for some reason I I don't know I'm not good with names but she's very unlikable and Bryce which is the girl in this series is incredibly unlikable and I'm starting to think that that's like her gig you know she doesn't really want you to like her female characters but you don't have to like them to like still enjoy the book you know so yeah I I'm at page 136 I at, honestly I'm doing the bare minimum today and would like to just get to page 200 if I could I, this book is gonna take me a long time to read I'm also really distracted by the audiobook I'm reading I'm reading Night Swim by Megan Goldlin and that one is just so good that I don't really have the thought capacity to like go back and forth because all I want to do is read that so I think I have like two hours left of that I think once I finish that I'll be able to concentrate more on this and I'm hoping that tomorrow I can I, I would like to get like at least halfway done by tomorrow and finish it sometime this week I wanted to finish it literally this weekend but I just don't think that that's gonna happen because when I sit down and read it I go through it quick but it's getting the motivation to sit down and read it so I don't know 
I'll just have to see. I'll probably check in at 200 or something. So I got no reading footage, which is fine, but I read about 100 pages yesterday. And it's getting better. I think I've realized like kind of what I don't like about it and what I like about it. What I like about it is the world and I also it reminds me of the Dresden Files in the sense that there's a ton of magical things all at once and so it's not just about vampires or just about fairies or whatever you have the whole gambit and so that world is kind of cool to see and I also like that the main character isn't super likable and they've introduced newer characters that are like kind of cool too so I like the characters in it but what I don't love about it is I think the magical system is just too broad because there's so many beings there's not it's not a cohesive magic system it's just like kind of whatever and the the urban fantasy setting I think the world that she built is not grounded in reality enough for it to be believable so I think whenever you create a new world unless you're doing like Lord of the Rings or something you really have to ground it in some sort of reality so it has to almost remind you of something and I mentioned that kind of reminded me of New Orleans but it doesn't remind me of New Orleans enough to like ground it if that makes sense so I'm on page I think I'm on 300 or two something I really wanted to finish it this weekend it's not gonna happen and if I don't finish it tomorrow which I know that I'm not I probably won't read it again till next weekend and I'll try to read it next weekend because I feel like this is just a book that during the week like while I'm working I, I enjoy like during my little breaks I like to read and this is just not going to be like a book that I'm gonna want to sit and read at work I need to like concentrate on it I'm even having trouble like sometimes when I watch Survivor I like to read a little bit while I'm watching and I really don't love doing that with this book so yeah I don't I I'm still pretty still pretty undecided about it but so far I'm not loving it and it's so disappointing because I, I thought I would love this I really thought this was gonna be like just perfect um, but I am excited to read the next Throne of Glass and I'm still excited to read Court of Thorn and Roses which I think I'll start after I read the next uh, Throne of Glass because I'm not reading her series in order you don't technically have to it's not Cassandra Clare in that sense but yeah I'm not going to keep rambling on I don't love it but I don't hate it it's just kind of like average you know we have to talk about it I finally got reading footage of myself reading this and Hold on, let me adjust the camera. I don't like this book. And I'll tell you why. There, it had, so at around page, <clears throat> I would say 300 or 250, things started to pick up and things started to get interesting. So I was excited because I was like, freaking finally, things are starting to pick up. But then, <sighs> then it slowed down again. This book is too long. This book, it's not, it is unnecessarily long. There are so many details in here that just don't need to be in here. And I know that the first book in a series generally, it's a lot of world building, it's a lot of character building. And it's not that there's necessarily a lot of characters, but in a way there is because I don't want to spoil anything so I'm trying to be very careful, but like they spend a lot of time building on the passive characters who like don't matter in the moment and less building on the passive characters that you're seeing like right then which is frustrating and then in terms of world building there is a lot of it but there's still not enough like even with the amount of words that have been used to build this world I still don't feel like I have a good grasp of the world and I always say that like fantasy, especially urban fantasy, has to be grounded somehow. And I don't necessarily mean grounded in, re well I do mean grounded in reality. It has to have something grounding it. So for example, the Mortal Instruments series had 
New York as like the foreground. So it gave you the opportunity to, there, there was a whole, in Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare, there's a whole other world outside of New York, which is like the Shadowhunters world. Am I like crooked? I bet I am, but it's fine. And it gave you, oh, I see, I am crooked. But it gave you the opportunity to like, you were building a whole other world in the Shadowhunters realm, but you were still grounded in New York. So like the first book, you knew that there was a secret world, but since you were grounded in New York, the first book wasn't spent building onto that world, right? Every book after it built on that world. And then you find out that there's other places and all this stuff. That's, I think, what makes a good fantasy series. If you're, if it's going to be a fantasy series and not a standalone book, which this is going to be a series. It's the first book in a series. That's what she said. So I think that's what makes a good fantasy series because if you start your series with strictly world building and character building and you just drone on and on and on about that you're really going to lose readers interest and another good example is ninth house by lee bardugo which takes place at yale university and it's like the secret societies of yale and yes there was a lot of world building at the university but it was still grounded in that recognizable place that we're familiar with and so, yes, the other books will continue to build on that, but you're not bombarded with almost like an information dump in the first book. That's what I feel like this book is. I am on page 411 of this book, and I feel like I've learned nothing. I feel like it hasn't kept my interest, and the one part of this book that interests me is a very... Um, I'll put a spoiler alert, but it's not really a spoiler. I don't think. I think other people have talked about it as not a spoiler, but there is a slow burn romance in this book. And I personally don't mind romance in fantasy, so it's not that big of a deal to me. But there's a slow burn romance in here, and it's like slow, like slow, slow. And I just, I don't know. So basically, with this book, because it's long, the way I wanted to structure my year is because big books often put me in a reading slump so to me if I can save these bigger books to read on the weekends and during the week knock out some of those books that are less than 300 pages that I genuinely want to read then I am hoping and some of the audiobooks that I wanted to read I'm hoping that will keep me out of my reading slump so that's what I've done this month so far I've been reading this on the weekends and I've been reading some other books during the week and it's really helped me stay out of the reading slot because I can tell you right now if I was only reading this book I would not have finished a book this year because I would still be in the same spot that I'm in because I'm not motivated to read it it doesn't interest me I don't care but I'm giving it one more shot the weekend's over now and I don't want to devote at this point right this second I don't want to devote any more time today to it and so I'm off Friday of this week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I am going to try to finish this next weekend since it's a long weekend. And if I do not finish it next weekend, I'm, I'm never going to finish it. I'm going to DNF it because if I can't devote four days to finishing it and finish it, I'm, not, I'm never going to. So next weekend will be like my last, it's last chance because I'm still... I know I said I don't care. I'm still interested to see what's going to happen, but I have a feeling, and sometimes fantasy authors do this, and I don't like it, I have a feeling what's going to end up happening is the plot of the first part of the book is going to end up being resolved, because it's really close to being resolved at this point, and it's 400 pages in out of almost 800. So I have a feeling they're going to resolve that first initial drama and then the second half is going to be devoted to something totally different, which is another aspect of fantasy that really, really pisses me off. And I don't like when books do that um, because to me, in my opinion, what that means is Sarah J. Mass 
took the first part of the book to the publisher said oh I finished this but I'm also almost done with a second book and the publisher was just like well instead of doing that let's make one big long book I don't know if that's like true because I don't know much about publishing but I just I have a feeling because a lot of fantasies do that especially first fantasies and like I don't like that I want to I would rather have one book that resolves one singular issue than like have a book with like one issue and then normally what ends up happening is it ends up being like a bigger issue now to be fair Sarah J Maas has done that in the past there's been these books where like like in the uh Throne of Glass series. That's actually the only series I've read by, of hers, by the way. Um, I'm acting like I know everything. I've never read Court of Thorns and Roses. I plan on reading that and I probably will do a reading vlog about it. But it depends. I'm doing a, I'm doing big book, big book reading vlogs and that's why I chose this one because it's over 500 pages. But anyway, um, I've only read the, the Throne of Glass series and I know in that series what will end up happening is there will be this like central mystery or whatever and then it leads to an even bigger mystery and I'm cool with that but in this case the mystery is so big because the thing with this book I know I'm ranting on and on but the thing with this book is that the premise is so good because it's an urban fantasy with like a murder mystery like true crime type feel so it feels like a mystery novel which is so good or which would be so good if it didn't drag on. So I'm going to check back in on Friday and I'll let you know, but I'm really irritated with this book. I'm not loving it and I wish I was because it seems to be everyone's favorite book of 2020 was Crescent City and I'm, I'm not liking it. I'm just not into it. Not loving it. Nope. nope. It's six o'clock in the morning, so the lighting is like, it is what it is. The only reason I'm updating at six o'clock in the morning is because I normally film on the weekends, and you know I don't like something when I don't even want to talk about it anymore. So this weekend, I just could not bring myself to finish this video, and okay, like, hello. And then this morning, I was finally like, I'm fucking done. With I, I'm done with this book. Um, I'd already DNF'd it. I DNF'd this book at 431 pages. Um, some may get mad at me for counting it on my Goodreads, but when you read 430 pages of a book, I think you have the right to count it as read <laughs> because I, I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to go on a rant about this because it's pointless to do so. But one of my biggest pet peeves, I, I'm cool with a book that has a slow burn at the beginning. Like first 50 pages aren't the best, but you're building up to something really good. I'm cool with that. I can even sit through 100 pages of a book like that. Um, but when you are arguing that just hold out, after 500 pages it gets really good. 
So you want me to read 500 pages of, to be quite honest, a subpar, not very well written book, and then it gets good the last 200 pages? No. No, no, no. That's, that's not a good book, okay? I don't care if the last 200 pages would have been the best book I'd ever read in my life because it would not have made up for the first 500 that I read. There was, can we stop fighting? He wants to take a nap. Let him nap. Ridiculous, honestly. So, so yeah, I, I'm just irritated because so many people had this of their and in their best books and I honestly feel like it's because it was Sarah J Mass. And don't get me wrong, like I like I, I like I said in this video, I really liked Throne of Glass. I'm reading that series, not like at the moment, but like I've been reading it. Um I actually started it during quarantine and it ended up being like it reinvigorated my love for reading, which says a whole lot, you know. I'm on book 6 Empire of Storms which I'll probably do a reading vlog on, but this this book just wasn't good. It just wasn't good, and I don't know what everyone sees in it. I feel like it only won the Goodreads Choice Awards because it was Sarah J. Mass. I feel like the only reason people even talk about it is because it's Sarah J. Mass, which is just incredibly frustrating. So I'm done. I will probably never pick this up again, which is so disappointing. I was ex I went into this thinking that this would be the first book I finished in 2021, that it would be my favorite book of the year, and it has turned into not that at all. It, it, like, honestly, this will probably go in either the worst books I've read this year or the most disappointing books I read this year because I, I don't like it. I just don't like it. So hopefully the next time I do this reading vlog or a reading vlog like this, it'll be a little bit more exciting. And I think this was not the way to start this series because I was really excited to start the series. I was like, oh, once a month, picking a big book, reading through it, telling you guys my thoughts and like kind of like going through the journey together, like spoiler free, I thought would be so fun. But this was not the book to start with. And I'm trying to like find some redeeming qualities about this book. But the longer I sit on it, the matter it makes me because I feel like when I was reviewing it initially, I was like trying to give it the benefit of the doubt because I was hoping it got better. And there was a point where I thought the book was taking a turn and I was starting to really like it. And then it just went right back. It's kind of like it info dumps you all the time. It's a lot of pointless stuff. <sighs> I just didn't like it and it's so disappointing so I'm done with this book I have some thoughts about the one that I would like to pick next month and I actually had a thought that because I was this book almost put me in a reading slump and I didn't allow it to because I DNF'd it and I that's my recommendation if you're reading a big book and you feel yourself starting to get slumpish from it just stop and if you're worried about numbers I think if you read the amount that a full-length book would be you can count it you know so i was thinking about what i wanted to do and so i was looking at my infernal devices series by cassandra clare and the second i'm on the second book in that series it only has 497 pages and for this challenge or whatever or for these vlogs i really wanted to do books that have more than 500 pages so my thought was maybe I could just finish the Infernal Devices series. Um, is it the Infernal Devices? It's the Clockwork Prince and all that stuff. So I could do that and finish the second and third book because I do this throughout the whole month. This isn't like a um, just like a weekend thing. So I could do that because I really liked the first book in that series and I really liked the Shadowhunter series. So maybe that would help me kind of get out of my slump. The other thought I had was starting Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, which I'm really excited to read, but that one is like a thousand pages, and I worry that reading a thousand pages of a book is going to be really difficult. Um, on my list of ones that I want to do this year, Throne of Glass and, or the sixth Throne of Glass and the first Court of Thorns and Roses was on the docket like of ones I wanted to do but I don't think I'm really ready to read another Sarah J Mass book um, already feeling kind of slumpish over this one so I don't think I'm gonna do that one and 
Um, I'm trying to think of other ones I had on the list. Oh, Priory of an Orange Tree. I also had that one. Um, but again, like I'm kind of worried that it's going to make me slumpish. So, um, I don't know if this will go up before I start my next reading vlog, but if it does put what you think I should read down below because I don't, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I'm, I'm fairly certain I'm going to end up doing the, um, Infernal Devices series. Uh, I also, there, what was the other ones? Uh, the third book in the Passage series by Justin Cronin was another option. And then the second book in the fifth season series or Broken Earth trilogy by M.K. Jemison was another option. So basically my criteria is just books that have kind of been sitting on my shelf that are over 500 pages. That's kind of how I'm deciding what to read. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to do Infernal Devices because I'm excited about it and I keep getting drawn to it and I've wanted to read it for a while. So I think I'm going to do that. That's it. I'm really disappointed. I don't want you guys to watch this and think this is indicative of what the whole series is going to be like. I think you can just tell when I don't like something and when I'm not excited about something. And I think that was very clear throughout this whole thing that I just wasn't excited. I wasn't excited to film it. I wasn't excited to sit down and read it. So I wasn't excited to like turn my camera on and like film myself reading it. So yeah. I thought about doing a new moon reading vlog or not new moon. What is it called? the new Twilight book, um, but I read the first 30 pages of that and I did not like it, so I'm nervous to read that one as well. I reread Twilight during quarantine too because it kind of just like reinvigorated my, again, like I needed to reinvigorate my love for reading and I was cleaning stuff out and I found those books and reread all of them, so that one might come later in the year because I just don't think I can, I think it'll put me in a slump, so anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, uh, see you next time, bye. Shining. Cause when you're with me, baby, don't you see I'm shining?